Hello and welcome to another explainer video for tools created by the Pain and Quality of Life Integrative Research Lab at Western University. We uh, Today we're going to talk about the Traumatic Injuries Distress Scale, or the TIDS. Uh, so what I've done here, again, I've uh, navigated to the lab's website, pearlresearch.com, that's Pearl with an I, and I've clicked on clinician resources across the top. Here you'll see a growing list of uh, tools that we've created for free use by clinicians. Uh, in particular, uh, rehab clinicians. And I'm going to choose the Traumatic Injuries Distress Scale, which is the very first entry. Here you're going to find a description of what the tool is and what it's used for. In this case, the TIDS is meant to be a tool used to help identify risk uh, subgroups in people following acute uh, musculoskeletal uh, injuries. This has been developed primarily for those with non catastrophic injuries, so things like uh, strains and sprains, awkward lifts and bends, sports injuries, slips and falls, um, car crashes and, and whiplash, that sort of thing. And it's been designed to be useful for people with acute injuries rather than uh, chronic injuries. The intention, as I mentioned, is to help clinicians identify those who may be at risk of uh, non-recovery or slow recovery following those injuries and the reasons why that may be. So far, you can see we've got the TIDS available in English and French, and a Spanish version is very nearing completion. For what it's worth, the tool is also available as an optional tool in the photo database. That's Focus on Therapeutic Outcomes for those that use that database. I'm going to click on the English version, and that will bring up a PDF file. Again, this is free for use, uh, as long as you don't modify it and you're not using it for industry-sponsored research. The tool itself, as you can see right now, is 12 items long. This is, in fact, the 16th iteration of this tool. We've uh, been developing it now for 10 years. And so it's uh, it's gone through a lot of revisions, refinements, retests, revisions, etc., etc. And here's where we are now at 12 items long. Each item, as you can see, is asking the person to respond to the question with relation specifically to the symptoms they've experienced since the injury for which they are seeing you. Their options here being frequency-based, never, occasionally, or often, or all the time. Simple, uh, in this case, circle the number. And the interpretation of the tool, as you can see here, uh, is going to be under the user's guide. The user's guide, if you open that up, is going to give you a bit of background on what the tool is, how we developed it, and continue to work on it. And then, in particular, what's more important is how to interpret the tool. You can read through this, but what I'm going to do is come right down to a visual here. First of all, you can see that we've got uh, three subscales within this tool. One of them is the uncontrolled pain subscale for those who feel like they are not controlling their pain or managing their pain very well. If you see people scoring high on that, then a reasonable direction here for treatment would be to help them with some pain management strategies. The next one is negative affect. Those who are scoring high on that uh, it might be uh, someone that you perhaps consider bringing in. If you're a physio, perhaps bringing in a psychology or mental health colleague, uh, or perhaps um, exploring this further to see if perhaps there may be some early signs of uh, depressive disorder, that kind of thing. And then two items specifically that address intrusion or hyperarousal. These are this is a a subscale as well for the um, for a lot of post-traumatic stress uh, diagnostics uh, tools. So we can see that uh, people who score high there may be benefiting from, from, uh, from some stress management or anxiety management approaches early on. Going down further here is how we might interpret those. And so I've created a graphic here that is uh, fairly simple to use. Give people within three or four weeks of an injury. Um, that's a, uh, let me back that up and say between two days and three or four weeks. So they have to have lived with it for long enough to at least be able to answer the questions on frequency. Those who score six or under, uh, you can reasonably well predict uh, full recovery. And now this is when you sum up every item on the tool. Those who score 13 or greater, in this case out of 24, uh, are predicted to fall into this slower non-recovery pathway. And those who fall somewhere between that, seven to 12, are ones who are sort of moderate or unknown risk and require some more workup. If we take a look at the slow or non-recovery pathway, we can go then go underneath and we can look at those individual subscales. And here we've also got some additional cut scores. So you can see here those who score four or higher on the uncontrolled pain subscale. As I said earlier, they may be people who would benefit from some early pain management strategies. And we'd suggest you monitor them for the development of pain that's not resolving. 
Those who score three or higher on the negative affect scale, so not very high in this case, are those who might benefit from perhaps some uh, some emotional intervention, some mental health intervention perhaps. Uh, we need to be cautious about uh, labeling people as depressed. This is not a depressive uh, screening or diagnostic tool, but we would suggest that you perhaps you monitor for these folks for potentially the development of depressive disorders or symptoms going forward. And then those who score two or higher out of four on those two intrusion or hyperarousal items, uh, those are folks who uh, might be conceivably at risk for uh, an anxiety type disorder, including PTSD. And so once again, we suggest that while we're not diagnosing or screening, we certainly can't even do that at this stage um, with an acute injury, but do monitor those people and, uh, and make sure that if you start to see signs that would suggest some kind of a, 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 an emotional pathology that you are ready to intervene quickly. So that's the TIDS. Uh, again, a fairly simple tool, uh, has been developed very rigorously over many, many years. Uh, we continue to work on it, and uh, I'd encourage you to have a go. All for now.